All right, guys. All right. Uh, I have. I'm going to just walk you through the steps that I take to take the scan that I did of a airport jetway and make it into a two-dimensional file from the 3D file. So I have uh, the files that we scanned. Um, I'm going to go through this uh, D05. Uh, I've already gone through two and four, and I'll just show you the steps I take to do this D05. And we, yeah, we should be good to go. So I'm going to just open this up. We got all the files that it creates: the 2D DXF, 3D DXF, text files, CSV files. I'm going to go with just the straight old DWG file. And if we just drag and drop this into AutoCAD, it's going to open up that file. Um, I'm going to zoom to extents. So if I double click on the mouse wheel, it's going to zoom to extents. And you'll see a down plan view of the jetway that we scanned. Um, I'm going to just move it to a more isometric view. And I'm going to type in orbit. And then you can see kind of the jetway in 3D. A um, couple of things to note here, just so you can understand what we're looking at. These points in space here are something that we can ignore. Those those are kind of a glitch with the software. You can see this straight line here is the, um, the level line that we took when we were on site. So the first two points we took were right on a, a green laser line level. And uh, it just kind of trails off with these other red points. So let's uh, we'll ignore those, and I'll show you how to get rid of those later. Um, these points here, I'm going to actually do uh, change this so that we can view this in two viewports. And we're going to do it. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do viewports one and viewports two and we're going to make it horizontal and that's nice about this is if we look at this from the top you can see all these numbers and x's if we look at this from the side those numbers and x's are just lines because they were generated in a top-down view so kind of help you figure out what's what so and then this view see I just highlighted point 73 and point 73 is highlighted down here so anyway so these points were the uh, the vertical separation between the segments that we were measuring um, you can see this is kind of like the start of uh, everything and what we want to do is we want to just take Basically, if you look at the floor plan, we want to take each side uh, that we scan. So here's one side, and here's the other side. And we want to isolate those uh, and create two-dimensional elevations from this three-dimensional data. Um, so the first step is basically me setting up this uh, these two viewports. Uh, the next step is kind of getting some stuff isolated. Now, these this line here is really just connecting a couple of things, so I'm going to delete that. Um, and actually, the first thing, first thing I want to do is I don't want to be working in the file that I just opened up here, which was sorry, which where is it? I had someplace. Oh, I don't want to be working in this file. I actually want to save as and create a new file. And it's just a uh, AutoCAD habit that I have. So I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to go save as and I'm going to rename this as a new file and I'm just going to go to my root folder and I have, you can see I've already got some worksheets here for the other ones that I worked on. This is gate D5 so I'm going to say worksheet number one, that's fine, save. Now anything I do here um, won't be affected with uh, that first file that we we opened. If I screw this up, okay. If I screw this up, then it won't uh, matter. Um, and then I can reopen it and steal information from it or start over again if I need to. So, um, 
So now I'm going to keep going through and editing this. So I'm just getting rid of the lines that connect it because those don't really do too much. Again, this is kind of like a glitch, so I'm just going to select similar, and you can see they all highlighted, and they're all in that, that plane. And I'm going to right-click and hide them so they're not showing up. Now I want to isolate each side. So I'm going to start with the side, uh, this side. So I want to get rid of this side. So if I right-click and hit isolate, and that just cleaned everything up. If I undo what I just did, I'll show you what happens. See how this is pretty clean and nice, just one line going through? If I undo that, and you can see these are kind of overlapping, so that's why it's nice to be able to isolate these. Um, so hide, and now we can see what's going on. Now, these are the points that I was talking about. Those are blocks. Um, those are made when, when you create the file. Um, or when the disto creates a file, they're kind of self-generated. Um, I want to make it so that those are a point, not an X. Um, and the way you do that is if I go to Block Editor, which is BE, we can see there's two points here. Um, there's just a point, and it's just a crosshair. And if I type in point, or PO, and select the middle of this crosshair and then delete these two lines, what's left is just this little point. And when I close it, all those X's are now turned into those little points. I'm going to do the same thing with this guy, just a different style. Oops. And do PO for point, Let's click the middle, delete, make sure that point's there, and then I'm going to close it save the changes. Now you can see in the elevation that we have going on here that those are now just points in space, they're not X's. The other thing that I don't really care about to see is if you, you know, if you're seeing all these little red dashes, that's all these numbers which we don't really care about. So I'm going to select similar and you can see they all highlighted. They've all highlighted here. And I'm going to right click and say hide because we don't need to see those. So now I've just taken that, you know, the 3D scan that we had, and I've isolated this single wall, and I've isolated the points that I want to keep, and now I'm going to just take all this information, and I'm going to copy it over in a in a certain, a certain increment. So I like to keep things, uh, good measurements so that if we needed to copy more information, it'd just be a matter of highlighting it and moving at the same increment. So I'm going to say 1,500. So now I've just copied, so now there's two. So just copy the geometry from this over. And if I were to go back into this isolation and end isolation, you can see all of that data that I hid before is now back. But all the data that I wanted is now copied over here without that extra data. So it's just a AutoCAD thing, clean thing to do. So next thing I'm going to do is grab all this geometry. I'm going to hit X for explode. That's just going to take all the blocks and make them go away. I'm going to hit do it one more time because that's just a thing, nice thing to do. So now when I highlight everything, the geometry we're looking at are just lines and points, which is all I want. Um, so now we're going to take, and if you look at it from the top view, this is kind of going in and going out because that's the way the jetway was. But we really don't care about the ins and outs. We want to flatten everything to make it so that, you know, we can utilize it in a two-dimensional environment. So I'm going to just grab everything here. You can see, you know, that we have the two viewports. One's looking at it from the front. One's looking at it from the top. So when I highlight one, it highlights the other. It's kind of nice to visualize what's going on. So I'm going to highlight everything and say flatten. And it's going to say, do you want to remove the hidden lines? If you say yes, all these points are going to disappear because it's, for some reason, thinks it's a hidden line. So I'm going to say no. So I'm just going to hit enter. And you'll see in the top view, everything has just flattened to the same plane. And in this front view, nothing's really changed but now we can start working with it in a two-dimensional aspect of things. Last thing I'm going to do before I move to the other side is I'm just going to make all these, oops, by layer, and I'm going to make all these zero. So this is just the layer of which they are, and now when I import them into the final drawing that they're going to be in, it's not going to pull in all these extra 
uh, layers that I don't really care about. So this is uh, the, the one side, and now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So the only thing that's slightly different is I'm going to do the same idea. So I'm going to select similar, right-click, and isolate, and hide those points because we don't care about them. But on this wall, I need to highlight this whole side, but I also would like to highlight this uh, this horizontal line, which is my level line, um, and that's you can see it's highlighted on this side because that's the si only side we took it on. We didn't take it on both sides, so I want to isolate that as well. So now that I've highlighted everything, actually I wanted to do it in reverse. I'm going to hide all this. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to hold the Shift key and ungrab that, and then I'm going to right click and isolate and hide. So now you can see all I have left is the horizontal line, and now this is the opposite side. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to copy this over and to the right by a certain increment, say 3,000 inches or units, but 3,000 is I'm working in inches. So um, And now I can go, oops, only thing before I copy that over. So I wanted to hide these numbers, so we don't care about those. So let's isolate or select similar and isolate and hide. Now I can take everything here, copy it over 3,000. So I'm just hitting CO for copy, 3,000. Now I can go back into the isolation area and unisolate everything. So you can see. Uh, this view has gone back to what we originally started with, and this this is the flattened first side, and now we're going to be working on this side. So I'm just going to get this in our sites. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, because we edited the blocks from before, they're already done, so we don't need to do that again. But the thing that we do need to do is, and I'm going to make this a little bit different, is I'm going to, um, is we need to rotate this 180 degrees uh, three-dimensionally so that we have so both you know so that it's laid out correctly uh, in the two-dimensional world so I'm gonna highlight everything here and I'm gonna hit in 3d type in 3d rotate and why does it ask me for everybody? that's not what I want grab it oops grab it and type in 3d rotate it's asking me for something different than I'm used to. It's funny. Um, one more time. There we go. It's asking me for a base point, but I don't really want a base point. I just wanted this uh, gyro gizmo thing to pop up. So I want to rotate it in the horizontal plane, and I want to rotate it at 180 degrees. And now you can see from and I want to go back to the top view because I want to show I want to see it flatten when next when I get that done so now we got it like kind of opened up like a book um, and this is the you know if you were going up the ramp towards the airport this would be the uh, the right side of the ramp and this would be the left side of the ramp which is exactly how I want to portray it in a draw in a two-dimensional drawing so now that that's all done, I'm going to just grab everything here and do that explode again. So X for explode. Do it one more time just for kicks. Let's make sure we got it all. And now I'm going to flatten it. So I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to type in flatten. And I'm going to hit, do you want to remove wooden mines? I want to keep it at no. So I'm just going to hit enter again. And you can see in the plan view, everything has flattened. And it has flattened to the same um, plane as the other one that we flattened. And last thing I want to do is make this layer zero. So now we have isolated the two sides. We've made them two-dimensional. Now I want to just take them from this drawing and put them into a, a new drawing so that we're not working in this three-dimensional environment. We're working in a two-dimensional environment. So I'm going to uh, do one thing first to make my life easy. If you can see, there's a little Z here and a little X there. If I were to rotate this in an isometric view, you'll see my X and my Y um, are kind of in a horizontal, and my Z is vertical, um, which 
in real life that is the way it was, but I want to make it so that my uh, Z becomes my Y. And the reason why I want to do that is when I copy and paste it from this to a new drawing, which I'm going to do right, I'm going to make a new drawing right now. I'm just going to go with my standard, uh, standard drawing template file. If we were to see a UCS here, and we're not, but we can see that we're in a top-down view. And if we go back to this one, the view that it is right now is we're in a front view. So if I were to copy this from this file to this file, what we'd get are just lines. What we would get is this view, which doesn't help us. Um, so I want to go into here and I want to type in UCS, which is Universal Coordinate System. And I want to say I don't want I don't care about it being world or whatever. I want to just say just match the view. And now you can see now this is a Y and an X. And what's going to happen? And and this has changed to top view. So now when I copy this from this file to this file, it comes in correctly. The other thing that's happened is uh, those. If I orbit this. Those, uh, oops, the points that we had as just points in the other draw drawing have come in as uh, the points in this file. It's really not a big deal. What we're going to do is type in D, 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 P, type. And then right now, see, we're selected as this X. We're just going to make them a point in space. Now you can see it's changed for the better. And now we can process this in the next level, which I'll do in another video. Um, I just wanted to show you basically how to take it from the 3D to a 2D, and now we can work with it from here. So I'm just going to save this file, and I'm going to save it as this D5, I think it is. Yeah, D5. And save it, and now I can start getting ready to process that. So that's how to take it from the 3D to the 2D, and then I'm going to show you how to take it from a 2D and make it a refined 2D, and that should be it. All right, I'll get you in the next video.